Okay, following along after learning the basics of what an antigen is. Um, so now we're learning about how do antibodies recognize different antigens. So if we remember, it's B cells that make antibodies. And the general function of antibodies are to attach to pathogens, specific pathogens, and mark them for destruction by other immune cells like uh, macrophages. Remember, macrophages, they come along very slowly. They're always cruising in the bloodstream and in tissues looking for their pathogens. They can engulf or phagocytose those pathogens and kind of blow them up, destroy them in their bellies. Okay, so B cells, one B cell makes one specific kind of antibody. So it is not the case that one B cell makes lots of different antibodies lots of different kinds of antibodies. One B cell, one kind of antibody. So that's how I've drawn it here. So B cell number one makes antibody number one. And this antibody is just roaming around in the bloodstream, in the lymph vessels, in the tissues, looking for its very specific antigen. And in this case, it's antigen one. So this antibody just, and it was randomly made, um, it's made to recognize this very specific sequence of amino acids. So antibody one cannot recognize just any antigen. It cannot recognize, for example, antigen two. It can only recognize antigen one. And why is this? Well, remember, antibodies are proteins, and that means that it's made up of a chain of amino acids, and this chain can fold on itself and make a very specific shape and size. Um, and it can basically be a limitless number of shapes and sizes. And as I usually draw this antibody as a Y, if we go to the forked ends here, um, this is the antigen binding site. So these ends are extremely um, specific for this amino acid sequence. So this right here, this end, that's what's specifically going to recognize that amino acid sequence and it's going to attach to that sequence and bind to that sequence. And then what happens after that? Well, this other end, the non-forked end, um, is actually constant. So for all the different kinds of antibodies, this sequence back here is going to be the same. No matter what antibody you have, it's the same. So this constant region is recognized by cells like macrophages. So remember, the macrophages, they're moving around, and they can find, and this constant end, this constant region, is a signal to those macrophages to say, hey, this is a pathogen that's marked by an antibody. We need to phagocytose that and destroy it. This antibody also serves as a signal, um, going back to the B cell, to say, hey, we found a partner. We need this B cell to divide and we need it to make tons of antibodies. So then this B cell will differentiate or specialize into our plasma cells. So remember, plasma cells are the antibody factories. So once they get the signal that, hey, this is a good kind of antibody, we need this, they'll start to make those antibodies super fast. So again, let's repeat that. So the B cell, before it has recognized its pathogen, or its antigen, will just make uh, a low amount of antibodies. And it only make one antibody, one kind of antibody that's only able to recognize one antigen. So randomly it goes throughout the body, it finds antigen one, it finds that specific antigen, and it attaches, it binds. And this does a couple different things. One, it marks that pathogen for destruction because the macrophage can recognize that other end, the constant region, and it will engulf it and destroy it. Two, it also is a signal back to that original B cell, B cell number one, to say, hey, this is a good antibody to make. We should start making that. So the B cell will get signals to divide, 
and also specialize into plasma cells and start just being an antibody one factory against that antigen number one. The third thing that happens is, if you remember from our lecture, viruses uses receptors to enter into cells. So, for example, this N protein, this spike protein, it's float, the virus is floating around the body and it finds a cell with its receptor. Um, so then the flu is able to bind to the host cell and enter into the cell. So it needs the interaction of this N protein and its receptor on the surface of the cell. Well, if you can imagine that if you have these antibodies binding to the H or the N proteins, it's actually blocking the site where it has to enter into a cell. So three functions of the antibody. One, marks for destruction by macrophages. Two, it's a signal back to B cells to make more of that antibody and also specialize into plasma cells. And then three, it blocks the virus from entering into cells. So next, we're gonna go over a specific flu concept, which is antigenic drift.